Pier Paolo Pasolini Italian PJR Paolo Pasolini the 5th of March 1922 to the 2nd of November 1975 was an Italian film director poet writer and intellectual Pasolini also distinguished himself as an actor journalist novelist playwright and political figure he remains a controversial personality in Italy due to his blunt style and the focus of some of his works on taboo sexual matters, but he is an established major figure in European literature and cinematic arts. His murder prompted an outcry in Italy and its circumstances continue to be a matter of heated debate. Biography Early life Pasolini was born in Bologna, traditionally one of the most politically leftist of Italian cities. He was the son of Carlo Alberto Pasolini, a lieutenant in the Italian army, and Susanna Calusi, an elementary school teacher. His parents married in 1921, Pasolini was born in 1922 and named after his paternal uncle. His family moved to Conegliano in 1923 and, two years later, to Belluno, where another son, Guidalberto, was born. In 1926, Pasolini's father was arrested for gambling debts. His mother moved with the children to her family's house in Casarsa della Delizia, in the Friuli region. That same year, his father Carlo Alberto, first detained and then identified Antio Zamboni as the would-be assassin of Benito Mussolini following his assassination attempt. Carlo Alberto was persuaded of the virtues of fascism. Pasolini began writing poems at the age of seven, inspired by the natural beauty of Casarsa. One of his early influences was the work of Arthur Rimbaud. In 1931, his father was transferred to Idria in the Julian March now Idrija in Slovenia. In 1933 they moved again to Cremona in Lombardy, and later to Scandiano and Reggio Emilia. Pasolini found it difficult to adapt to all these dislocations, though he enlarged his poetry and literature readings Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Shakespeare, Coleridge, Novalis and left behind the religious fervor of his early years. In the Reggio Emilia High School, he met his first true friend, Luciano Serra. The two met again in Bologna, where Pasolini spent seven years completing high school. Here he cultivated new passions, including football. With other friends, including Erms Perini, Franco Ferrolfi, Elio Melli, he formed a group dedicated to literary discussions. In 1939 Pasolini graduated and entered the Literature College of the University of Bologna, discovering new themes such as philology and aesthetics of figurative arts. He also frequented the local cinema club. Pasolini always showed his friends a virile and strong exterior, totally hiding his interior turmoil. He took part in the fascist government's culture and sports competitions. In his poems of this period, Pasolini started to include fragments in Friulan, a minority language he did not speak but learned after he had begun to write poetry in it. I learned it as a sort of mystic act of love, a kind of failibrisma, like the Provençal poets. As an early adult, Pasolini identified as an atheist. <laughs> early poetry In 1942, Pasolini published at his own expense a collection of poems in Friulan, Versia Casarsa, which he had written at the age of 18. The work was noted and appreciated by such intellectuals and critics as Gianfranco Contini, Alfonso Gatto and Antonio Russi. His pictures had also been well received. Pasolini was chief editor of a magazine called Il Cetaccio, the Civ, but he was fired after conflicts with the director, who was aligned with the fascist regime. A trip to Germany helped him also to perceive the «provincial» status of Italian culture in that period. These experiences led Pasolini to revise his opinion about the cultural politics of fascism and to switch gradually to a communist position. In 1942, the family took shelter in Casarsa, considered a more tranquil place to wait for the conclusion of the Second World War, a decision common among Italian military families. In the weeks before the 8th of September armistice, Pasolini was drafted. He was captured and imprisoned by the German Wehrmacht, but escaped disguised as a peasant and found his way to Casarsa. Here he joined a group of other young enthusiasts of the Friulan language who wanted to give Casarsa Friulan a status equal to that of Udine, the official regional standard. From May 1944 they issued a magazine entitled Strahligat di Ka da Laga. 
In the meantime, Casarsa suffered Allied bombardments and forced enlistments by the Italian Social Republic, as well as partisan activity. Pasolini tried to remain apart from these events. Starting in October 1943, he, his mother and other colleagues taught students unable to reach the schools in Pertinone or Udine. This educational workshop was considered illegal and broke up in February 1944. He had his first experience of gay love for one of his students. His brother Guido, aged 19, joined the Party of Action and their Osopo Friuli Brigade, taking to the bush near Slovenia. On 12 February 1945 Guido was killed in an ambush planted by Italian Garibaldine partisans serving in the lines of Tito's Yugoslavian guerrillas. It was a harrowing tragedy for Pasolini and his mother. Six days later Pasolini and others founded the Friulan Language Academy Accademiuta di Langa Furlana. Meanwhile, on account of Guido's death, Pasolini's father Carlo Alberto returned to Italy from his detention period in November 1945. He settled in Casarsa. Also in November, Pasolini graduated from university after completing a final thesis about the work of Giovanni Pascoli (1855–1912), an Italian poet and classical scholar. In 1946, Pasolini published a small poetry collection, I Diari, I, the Diaries, with the Accademiuta. In October, he traveled to Rome. The following May, he began the so-called Quaderni Rossi, handwritten in old-school exercise books with red covers. He completed a drama in Italian, Il Capolano. His poetry collection, I Pianti, The Cries, was also published by the Accademiuta. Topic: <laughs> Relationship with the Italian Communist Party. On the 30th of October 1945, Pasolini joined the pro-devolution association Patteri Tal Friul, founded in Udine. The political status of the region became a matter of contention between different political factions. Pasolini wanted a Friuli based on its tradition, attached to its Christianity, but intent on civic and social progress, as opposed to those advocates of regional autonomy who wanted to preserve their privileges based on immobilism. He also criticized the Communist Party for its opposition to devolution and their preference for Italian centralism. He founded the party Movimento Popolare Friulano, but ended up quitting it, persuaded that it had come to be controlled and used by the Christian Democratic Party in order to counter the Yugoslavs, who in turn were attempting to annex large swaths of the Friuli region. On 26 January 1947 Pasolini wrote a declaration that was published on the front page of the newspaper Liberta. In our opinion, we think that currently only communism is able to provide a new culture. It generated controversy partly due to the fact he was still not a member of the Italian Communist Party PCI. He was planning to extend the work of the Accademiuta to the literature of other Romance languages and met the exiled Catalan poet, Carles Cardo. After joining the PCI, Pasolini took part in several demonstrations. In May 1949, Pasolini attended the Peace Congress in Paris. Observing the struggles of workers and peasants, and watching the clashes of protesters with Italian police, he began to conceive his first novel. During this period, while holding a position as a teacher in a secondary school, Pasolini stood out in the local Communist Party section as a skillful writer defying the notion that communism was contrary to Christian values, even though Pope Pius XII had excommunicated communist sympathizers from the Church. The local Christian Democrats took notice. In the summer of 1949, Pasolini was blackmailed by a priest to renounce politics or lose his teaching position. Similarly, after some posters were put in the loggia of San Giovanni, Giambattista Caron, a Christian Democrat deputy, warned Nico Naldini that his cousin Pasolini should abandon communist propaganda to prevent pernicious reactions. A small scandal broke out during a local festival in Ramicello in September 1949. Someone informed Cordovado, the local sergeant of the Carabinieri, of sexual conduct masturbation by Pasolini with three youngsters aged 16 and younger after dancing and drinking. Cordovado summoned the boy's parents, who hesitated, but did not file charges, despite Cordovado's urging. He nevertheless drew up a report, and the informer elaborated publicly on his accusations, sparking a public uproar. A judge in San Vito al Taliamento charged Pasolini with corruption of minors and obscene acts in public places." He and the 16-year-old were both indicted. The next month, when questioned, he would not deny the facts, but talked of a 
literary and erotic drive, and cited Andre Guide, the 1947 Nobel Prize for Literature laureate. Cordovado informed his superiors and the regional press stepped in. According to Pasolini, the Christian Democrats instigated the entire affair to smear his name. The Christian Democrats pulled the strings. He was fired from his job in Valvazone and he was expelled from the Communist Party by the party's Udine section, which he considered a betrayal. He addressed a critical letter to the head of the section, his friend Ferdinando Matino, and claimed he was being subject to a tacticism of the Communist Party. In the party, the expulsion was opposed by Teresa Deegan, Pasolina's colleague in education. He also wrote her a letter admitting his regret for being such a naive, even indecently so. His parents reacted angrily and the situation in the family became untenable. Rome In January 1950 Pasolini moved to Rome with his mother Susanna to start a new life. He was acquitted of both charges in 1950 and 1952. I came to Rome from the Friulan countryside. Unemployed for many years, ignored by everybody, driven by the fear to be not as life needed to be. After one year sheltered in a maternal uncle's flat next to Piazza Mattei, Pasolini and his 59 year old mother moved to a run down suburb called Rebibia, next to a prison. For three years, he transferred his Friulan countryside inspiration to this Roman suburb, one of the infamous Borgate where poor proletarian immigrants lived in often horrendous sanitary and social conditions. Instead of asking for help from other writers, Pasolini preferred to go his own way. He found a job working in the Cinecittà film studios and sold his books in the Bancarelle sidewalk shops of Rome. In 1951, with the help of the Abruzzese language poet Vittorio Clementi, he found a job as a secondary school teacher in Ciampino, a suburb of the capital. He had a long commute involving two train changes and earned a meager salary of 27,000 Italian lire. Topic. Success and charges In 1954, Pasolini, who now worked for the literary section of Italian state radio, left his teaching job and moved to the Monteverde Quarter. At this point, his cousin Graziella moved in. They also accommodated Pasolini's ailing, serotic father Carlo Alberto who died in 1958. Pasolini published La Meglio Gioventù, his first important collection of Friulan poems. His first novel, Ragazzi di Vita English, Hustlers, was published in 1955. The work had great success but was poorly received by the PCI establishment and, most importantly, by the Italian government. It initiated a lawsuit for obscenity against Pasolini and his editor, Garzanti. Although exonerated, Pasolini became a target of insinuations, especially in the tabloid press. In 1955, together with Francesco Leonetti, Roberto Roversi and others, he edited and published a poetry magazine called Officina. The magazine closed in 1959 after 14 issues. That year he also published his second novel, Una Vita Violenta, which unlike his first was embraced by the communist cultural sphere. He subsequently wrote a column for the PCI magazine Vi Nuovo from 1960 to 1965, which were published in book form in 1977 as La Belle Bandiere The Beautiful Flags. In 1957, together with Sergio Citti, Pasolini collaborated on Federico Fellini's film La Noti di Cabiria, writing dialogue for the Roman dialect parts. Fellini also asked him to work on dialogue for some episodes of La Dolce Vita. In 1960, he made his debut as an actor in Il Gabo and co wrote Long Night in 1943. Along with Ragazzi di Vita, he had his celebrated poem La Senari di Gramsci published, where Pasolini voiced tormented tensions between reason and heart, as well as the existing ideological dialectics within communism, a debate over artistic freedom, socialist realism and commitment. His first film as director and screenwriter was a caught one in 1961, again set in Rome's marginal quarters. It was a story of pimps, prostitutes and thieves that contrasted with Italy's post-war economic reforms. Although Pasolini tried to distance himself from neorealism, the film is considered to be a kind of second neorealism. Nick Barbaro, a critic writing in the Austin Chronicle, stated it, "...may be the grimmest movie he has ever seen. The movie aroused controversy and scandal. In 1963, the episode, La Ricotta, 
included in the anthology film Rogopig, was censored and Pasolini was tried for offense to the Italian state and religion. During this period Pasolini frequently traveled abroad, in 1961, with Elsa Moranti and Alberto Moravia to India where he went again seven years later, in 1962 to Sudan and Kenya, in 1963, to Ghana, Nigeria, Guinea, Jordan and Israel where he shot the documentary, Sopraluagi in Palestina. In 1970 he traveled again to Africa to shoot the documentary, Apunti per Unoristiate Africana. In 1966 he was a member of the jury at the 16th Berlin International Film Festival. In 1967, in Venice, he met and interviewed the American poet Ezra Pound. They discussed the Italian movement Neo-Avangardia and Pasolini read some verses from the Italian version of Pound's Pisan Cantos. The late 1960s and early 1970s were the era of the so-called student movement. Pasolini, though acknowledging the students' ideological motivations, and referring to himself as a Catholic Marxist, thought them anthropologically middle class, and therefore destined to fail in their attempts at revolutionary change. Regarding the Battle of Valle Giulia, which took place in Rome in March 1968, he said that he sympathized with the police, as they were children of the poor, while the young militants were exponents of what he called left-wing fascism. His film of that year, Teorema, was shown at the Venice Film Festival in a hot political climate. Pasolini had proclaimed that the festival would be managed by the directors. In 1970, Pasolini bought an old castle near Viterbo, several miles north of Rome, where he began to write his last novel, Il Petrolio, where he denounced obscure dealing in the highest levels of government and the corporate world, ENI, CIA, the mafia, etc. The novel documentary was left incomplete at his death. In 1972 he started to collaborate with the extreme left association Lotta Continua, producing a documentary, Twelve Disombra, concerning the Piazza Fontana bombing. The following year he began a collaboration for Italy's most renowned newspaper, Il Corriere della Sera. At the beginning of 1975 Garzanti published a collection of his critical essays, Scritti Corsari Corsair writings. Topic. Murder Pasolini was murdered on 2 November 1975 on the beach at Ostia. He had been run over several times by his own car. Multiple bones were broken and his testicles were crushed by what appeared to be a metal bar. An autopsy revealed that his body had been partially burned with gasoline after death. The crime was long viewed as a mafia-style revenge killing, extremely unlikely for one person to have carried out. Pasolini was buried in Casarsa. Giuseppe Pino Pelosi (1958–2017), then 17 years old, was caught driving Pasolini's car and confessed to the murder. He was convicted in 1976, initially with "unknown others," but this phrase was later removed from the verdict. 29 years later, on the 7th of May 2005, Pelosi retracted his confession, which he said had been made under the threat of violence to his family. He claimed that three people with a southern accent, had committed the murder, insulting Pasolini as a dirty communist. Other evidence uncovered in 2005 suggested that Pasolini had been murdered by an extortionist. Testimony by Pasolini's friend Sergio Chitti indicated that some of the rolls of film from Salo had been stolen, and that Pasolini planned to meet with the thieves on 2 November 1975 after a visit to Stockholm. Chidi's investigation uncovered additional evidence, including a bloody wooden stick and an eyewitness who said he saw a group of men pull Pasolini from the car. The Rome police reopened the case after Pelosi's retraction, but the judges responsible for the investigation found that the new elements were insufficient to justify a continued inquiry. Topic. Political views Topic. 1968 protests Pasolini generated heated public discussion with controversial analyses of public affairs. For instance, during the disorders of 1968, autonomous university students were carrying on a guerrilla-like uprising against the police in the streets of Rome, and all the leftist forces declared their complete support for the students, describing the disorders as a civil fight of proletariat against the system. Pasolini, however, made comments that have been frequently been interpreted as statements that he was with the police, or, more precisely, with the policemen. 
The main source regarding Pasolina's views of the student movement is his poem, Il PCI I Giovanni, The PCI to Young People, written after the Battle of Valle Giulia. Addressing the students, he tells them that, unlike the international news media which has been reporting on them, he will not flatter them. He points out that they are the children of the bourgeoisie. Avet fache di figli di papa, v odio cum odio i vostri papa. You have faces of daddy's sons, I hate you as I hate your daddy. Before stating, Quando i e r i a valle Giulia avet fato abat coi polizioti, i o simpatizavo coi polizioti. When yesterday at Valle Giulia you and the policemen were throwing punches, I sympathized with the policemen. He explained that this sympathy was because the policemen were figli di poveri, children of the poor. The poem highlights the aspect of generational struggle within the bourgeoisie represented by the student movement. Stampa e Corriere della Sera, Newsweek e Monde, v Licano il culo. Siete i loro figli, la loro speranza, il loro futuro. Se mai, si trata di una lata intestina. Stampa and Corriere della Sera, Newsweek and Le Monde, they kiss your ass. You are their children, their hope, their future. If anything, it's in fighting. The 1968 revolt was seen by Pasolini as an internal, benign reform of the establishment in Italy, since the protesters were part of the petite bourgeoisie. The poem also implied a class hypocrisy on the part of the establishment towards the protesters, asking whether young workers would be treated similarly if they behaved in the same way. Occupate la università, ma dite che la stessa idea venga, a dei giovani operai, e allora, Corriere della Sera e Stampa, Newsweek e Monde, avrano tanta solicitudine, nel cercar di comprendere i loro problemi? La polizia si limitera a prendere un po' di bot dentro una fabbrica occupata? Ma, soprattutto, come potrebbe considersi, un giovane opereo di occupare una fabbrica, senza morire di fame dopo tre giorni? Occupy the universities, but say that the same idea comes, to young workers, so, Corriere della Sera and Stampa, Newsweek and Le Monde, will have so much care, in trying to understand their problems? Will the police just get a bit of a fight, inside a busy factory? But above all, how could, a young worker be allowed to occupy a factory, without dying of hunger after three days? Pasolini suggested that the police were the true proletariat, sent to fight for a poor salary and for reasons which they could not understand, against pampered boys of their same age, because they had not had the fortune of being able to study, referring to Polizioti figli di proletari meridionali picchiati da figli di papa in vena di brevate. Lit. Policemen, sons of proletarian southerners, beaten up by arrogant daddy's boys. He found that the policemen were but the outer layer of the real power, e.g. the judiciary and the judges. Pasolini was not alien to courts and trials. During all his life, Pasolini was frequently entangled in lawsuits filed against him, up to 33, variously charged with public disgrace, foul language, obscenity, pornography, contempt of religion, contempt of the state etc., for which he was always eventually acquitted. However, the conventional interpretation of Pasolina's position has been challenged. In an article published in 2015, Wu Ming Wan argues that Pasolina's statements need to be understood in the context of Pasolina's self confessed hatred of the bourgeoisie which had persecuted him for so long. He notes that, Il PCI I Giovanni states that, we i.e. Pasolini and the students are obviously in agreement against the police institution and that the poem portrays policemen as dehumanized by their work and that although the battles between students and the police were fights between the rich and the poor Pasolini concedes that the students were on the side of reason whilst the police were in the wrong Wu Ming Wan suggests that Pasolina's intent was to express skepticism regarding the idea of students being a revolutionary force, contending that only the working class could make a revolution, and that revolutionary students should join the Communist Party. Furthermore, he cites a column by Pasolini which was published in the magazine Tempo later that year, which described the student movement, along with the wartime resistance, as 
The Italian people's only two democratic revolutionary experiences. That year he also wrote in support of the Communist Party's proposals for disarming the police, arguing that this would create a break in the psychology of policemen. It would lead to the sudden collapse of that false idea of himself ascribed to him by power, which has programmed him like a robot. Pasolina's polemics were aimed at goading protesters into rethinking their revolt, and did not stop him from contributing to the autonomist Lada Continua movement, who he described as extremists, yes, maybe fanatic and insolently boorish from a cultural point of view, but they push their luck and that is precisely why I think they deserve to be supported. We must want too much in order to obtain a little. The rising society of consumption He was particularly concerned about the class of the subproletariat, which he portrayed in a caught one, and to which he felt both humanly and artistically drawn. Pasolini observed that the kind of purity which he perceived in the pre-industrial popular culture was rapidly vanishing, a process that he named La Scomparsa della Luciole lit. The disappearance of the fireflies. The joie de vivre of the boys was being rapidly replaced with more bourgeois ambitions such as a house and a family. He was critical of those leftists who held a traditional and never admitted hatred against Lumen proletariats and poor populations. In 1958 he called on the Communist Party to become the party of the poor people, the party, we may say, of the Lumen proletarians. Pasolina's stance finds its roots in the belief that a Copernican change was taking place in the Italian society and the world. Linked to that very idea, Pasolini was also an ardent critic of consumismo, i.e. consumerism, which he felt had rapidly destroyed Italian society since the mid-1960s to the early 1970s. He described the coprophagia scenes in Salo as a comment on the processed food industry. As he saw it, the society of consumerism, neocapitalism, and the new fascism had thus expanded an alienation, homogenization and centralization that the former clerical fascism had not managed to achieve, so bringing about an anthropological change, that change is related to the loss of humanism and the expansion of productivity as central to the human condition, which he despised. He found that new culture was degrading and vulgar. In one interview, he said, I hate with particular vehemency the current power, the power of 1975, which is a power that manipulates bodies in a horrible way, a manipulation that has nothing to envy to that performed by Himmler or Hitler. Topic: <laughs> Strong criticism of Christian democracy. Pasolini saw some continuity between the fascist era and the post-war political system which was led by the Christian Democrats, describing the latter as «clerico-fascism» due to its use of the state as a repressive instrument and its manipulation of power. He saw the conditions among the Roman sub-proletariat in the Borgate as an example of this, being marginalized and segregated socially and geographically as they were under fascism, and in conflict with a criminal police force. He also blamed the Christian Democrats for assimilating the values of consumer capitalism, contributing to what he saw as the erosion of human values. The June 1975 election saw the rise of the leftist parties, and dwelling on his blunt, ever more political approach and prophetic style during this period, he declared in the Corriere della Sera the time had come to put the most prominent Christian Democrat figures on trial in court, where they would need to be shown walking in handcuffs and led by the carabinieri. He felt that this was the only way they could be removed from power. Pasolini charged the Christian Democratic Party leadership with a number of crimes, being riddled with mafia influence, covering up a number of bombings by neo-fascists, collaborating with the CIA and working with the CIA and the Italian armed forces to prevent the rise of the left. Topic. Television linked to cultural alienation He was angered by economic globalization and cultural domination of the north of Italy around Milan over other regions, especially the south. He felt this was accomplished through the power of TV. He lashed out at publicity and television. A debate TV program recorded in 1971, where he denounced censorship, was not actually aired until the day following his murder in November 1975. In a reform plan that he drew up in September and October 1975, he got closer to the Communist Party, an island of salvation, 
Among the desirable measures to be implemented, he cited the abolition of compulsory secondary school, and television. Others He opposed the gradual disappearance of Italy's minority languages by writing some of his poetry in Friulan, the regional language of his childhood. His opposition to the liberalization of abortion law made him unpopular on the left. After 1968 he engaged with the left libertarian, liberal and anti-clerical radical party Partito Radical. he was involved in polemics with party leader Marco Panella, supported the party's initiative calling for eight referendums on various liberalizing reforms and had accepted an invitation to speak at the party's congress before he was killed. However, despite supporting the holding of a referendum on the decriminalization of abortion, he was opposed to actually decriminalizing it, and he also criticized the party's understanding of democratic activism as being a matter of equalizing access to capitalist markets for the working class and other subaltern groups. In an interview he gave shortly before his death, he stated he frequently disagreed with the party. Pasolini continued to give qualified support to the Communist Party. In June 1975, he said that he would still vote for the party because he felt it was, an island where critical consciousness is always desperately defended, and where human behavior has been still able to preserve the old dignity. And in his final months, he became close to the Rome section of the Italian Communist Youth Federation. A federation activist, Vincenzo Cerami, delivered the speech he was due to give at the Radical Party Congress. In it, Pasolini confirmed his Marxism and his support for the Communist Party. Outside of Italy, Pasolini took a particular interest in the developing world, seeing parallels between life among the Italian underclass and in the Third World, declaring that Bandung was the capital of three quarters of the world and half of Italy. He was also positive about the new left in the United States. After visiting the U.S. in the mid 1960s, he came to the conclusion that the new left will lead to an original form of non Marxist socialism and wrote that the movement reminded him of the Italian resistance. Pasolini saw these two areas of struggle as interlinked. After visiting Harlem, he stated that the core of the struggle for the Third World Revolution is really America. Topic. Sexuality The LGBT Encyclopedia states the following regarding Pasolina's homosexuality. While openly gay from the very start of his career thanks to a gay sex scandal that sent him packing from his provincial hometown to live and work in Rome, Pasolini rarely dealt with homosexuality in his movies. The subject is featured prominently in Teorema 1968, where Terence Stamp's mysterious god-like visitor seduces the son and father of an upper-middle-class family, passingly in Arabian Nights 1974, in an idol between a king and a commoner that ends in death, and, most darkly of all, in Salo, or the 120 Days of Sodom 1975, his infamous rendition of the Marquis de Chaudet's Compendium of Sexual Horrors. In 1963 Pasolini met the great love of his life, 15-year-old Ninetto Davoli, whom he later cast in his 1966 film Uccellacci e Uccellini literally bad birds and little birds but translated in English as the hawks and the sparrows. Pasolini became the youth's mentor and friend. Even though their sexual relations lasted only a few years, Ninetto continued to live with Pasolini and was his constant companion, as well as appearing in six more of his films. Topic. Works Pasolina's first novel, Ragazzi di Vita 1955, dealt with the Roman Lumen proletariat. The book caused obscenity charges to be filed against Pasolini, the first of many instances in which his art provoked legal problems. The movie A Caught One 1961, also about the Roman underworld, also provoked controversy, and conservatives demanded stricter censorship by the government. He wrote and directed the Black and White The Gospel According to Matthew 1964. It is based on scripture, but adapted by Pasolini, and he is credited as writer. Jesus, a barefoot peasant, is played by Enrique Irazuqui. While filming it, Pasolini vowed to direct it from the believer's point of view, but later said that upon viewing the completed work, he realized he had expressed his own beliefs. In his 1966 film Uccellacci e Uccellini literally bad birds and little birds but translated in English as the hawks and the sparrows, a picaresque—and at the same time mystic— 
Fable, Pasolini hired the great Italian comedian Toto to work with Ninetto Davoli, the director's lover at the time and one of his preferred, naive, actors. It was a unique opportunity for Toto to demonstrate that he was a great dramatic actor as well. In Teorema, Theorem, 1968, starring Terence Stamp as a mysterious stranger, Pasolini depicted the sexual coming apart of a bourgeois family. Variations of this theme were filmed by François Ozan in sitcom and Takashi Miike in Visitor Q. Later movies centered on sex-laden folklore, such as Boccaccio's Decameron (1971), Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales (1972), and Il Fiore della Mille e Una Notte (literally The Flower of One Thousand One Nights), released in English as Arabian Nights (1974). These films are usually grouped as the trilogy of life. While basing them on classics, Pasolini wrote the screenplays and took sole credit as writer. This trilogy, prompted largely by Pasolini's attempt to show the secular sacredness of the body against man-made social controls and especially against the venal hypocrisy of religious state indeed, the religious characters in the Canterbury Tales are shown as pious but immorally grasping fools were an effort at representing a state of natural sexual innocence essential to the true nature of free humanity. Alternately playfully body and poetically sensuous, wildly populous, subtly symbolic and visually exquisite, the films were wildly popular in Italy and remain perhaps his most enduringly popular works. Yet despite the fact that the trilogy as a whole is considered by many as a masterpiece, Pasolini later reviled his own creation on account of the many soft-core imitations of these three films in Italy that happened afterwards on account of the very same popularity he wound up deeply uncomfortable with. He believed that a bastardization of his vision had taken place that amounted to a commoditization of the body he had tried to deny in his trilogy in the first place. The disconsolation this provided is seen as one of the primary reasons for his final film, Salo, in which humans are not only seen as commodities under authoritarian control but are viewed merely as ciphers for its whims, without the free vitality of the figures in the trilogy of life. His final work, Salo, Salo, or The 120 Days of Sodom, 1975, exceeded what most viewers could accept at the time in its explicit scenes of intensely sadistic violence. Based on the novel 120 Days of Sodom by Marquis de Sade, it is considered Pasolina's most controversial film. In May 2006, Time Out's film guide named it the most controversial film of all time. Salo was intended as the first film of his trilogy of death, followed by an aborted biopic film about Giles de Raiz. <inaudible> Legacy As a director, Pasolini created a picaresque neorealism, showing a sad reality. Many people did not want to see such portrayals in artistic work for public distribution. Mama Roma 1962, featuring Anna Mignani and telling the story of a prostitute and her son, was an affront to the public ideals of morality of those times. His works, with their unequaled poetry applied to cruel realities, showing that such realities were less distant from most daily lives, and contributed to changes in the Italian psyche. Pasolina's work often engendered disapproval perhaps primarily because of his frequent focus on sexual behavior, and the contrast between what he presented and what was publicly sanctioned. While Pasolina's poetry often dealt with his gay love interests, this was not the only, or even main, theme. His interest in and use of Italian dialects should also be noted. Much of the poetry was about his highly revered mother. He depicted certain corners of the contemporary reality as few other poets could do. His poetry, which took some time before it was translated, was not as well known outside Italy as were his films. A collection in English was published in 1996. Pasolini also developed a philosophy of language mainly related to his studies on cinema. This theoretical and critical activity was another hotly debated topic. His collected articles and responses are still available today. These studies can be considered as the foundation of his artistic point of view. He believed that the language such as English, Italian, dialect, or other is a rigid system in which human thought is trapped. He also thought that the cinema is the written language of reality which, like any other written language, enables man to see things from the point of view of truth. His films won awards at the Berlin International Film Festival, Cannes Film Festival, Venice Film Festival, Italian National Syndicate for Film Journalists, UC Awards, Kinema Junpo Awards, International Catholic Film Office and New York Film Critics Circle. 
The Gospel According to St. Matthew was nominated for the United Nations Award of the British Academy of Film and Television Arts in 1968. Ebo Demant directed the documentary Das Mitlied East Gestorben about Pasolini. Stefano Battaglia made re Pasolini in dedication to Pasolini. In 2014, Abel Ferrara directed a biopic about Pasolini, with Willem Dafoe in the lead role. It was selected to compete for the Golden Lion at the 71st Venice International Film Festival. In 2015, Malga Kubiak directed a drama movie based on the story of Pier Paolo Pasolini's life and death titled P.P. Pasolini. The movie was screened at the 7th edition of the LGBT Film Festival in Warsaw, Poland and received a People's Choice Award at the festival. Filmography Feature films All titles listed below were written and directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini unless stated otherwise. Oedipus Rex and Medea are loosely based on plays by Sophocles and Euripides respectively. Documentaries Soperluaghi in Palestina per il Vangelo Secondo Matteo Camisi d'Amore Love Meetings, 1964 Apunti per un film Sullandia Apunti per un romanzo dell'Amundizia Apunti per un Orestiade Africana Notes towards an African Orestes, 1970 La Mura di Sanaa 1971 12 di Sombra 1972 1972 Pasolini e la forma della città 1975 Topic Episodes in Omnibus Films La ricotta in Rogopig 1963 First segment of La Rabbia 1963 La terra vista dalla luna in La streg The Witches 1967 Che cosa sono le nuvole? Capriccio all'Italiana 1968. La sequenza del fiore di carta in Amore e Rabbia 1969. Topic. Written works. Topic. Narrative. Ragazzi di vita, The Ragazzi, 1955. Una vita violenta, A Violent Life, 1959. Il sogno di una cosa, 1962. Amato mio, Adi impuri, 1982, originally written in 1948. Ali dogli occhi azzurri, 1965. Teorema, 1968. Reality, The Poet's Encyclopedia, 1979. Petrolio, 1992, incomplete. Topic. Poetry La Meglio Gioventù La Ceneri di Gramsci Lucignolo della Chiesa Cattolica La Religione del Mio Tempo Poesia in Forma di Rosa Trasimonor e Organizar La Nuova Gioventù 1975 Roman Poems Pocket Poets number no. 41 1986 The Selected Poetry of Pier Paolo Pasolini a bilingual edition 2014 Topic Essays Passione e Ideologia 1960 Consoniere Italiano, Poesia Popolare Italiana, 1960. Empirismo Eridico, 1972. Letter Luterane, 1976. La Belle Bandiere, 1977. Discrezioni di Discrezioni, 1979. Il CAOS, 1979. La Pornografia e Noiosa, 1979. Scritti Corsari, 1975. Letter, 1940 to 1954. Letters, 1940 to 54, 1986. Topic, theater. 
Orgia 1968 Portugal 1968 Calderon 1973 Afibalazioni 1977 Pilade 1977 Bastia da Style 1977 Topic Notes Topic References Aishella, George. Translation as Decanonization, Matthew's Gospel According to Pasolini, filmmaker Pier Paolo Pasolini, Critical Essay. Cross Currents, 2002. Di Stefano, John. Picturing Pasolini. Art Journal, 1997. Iloit, Audrine. Oedipus Rex by Pier Paolo Pasolini The Palimpsest, Rewriting and the Creation of Pasolini's Cinematic Language, Literature Film Quarterly 2004. Fabro, Elena ed. Il mito greco nell'opera di Pasolini. Adi del convegno Udine Casarsa della Delizia, 24-26 October 2002. Udine, Forum 2004, ISBN 88-8420-230-2 Kathleen. A Cinema of Poetry, What Pasolini Did to Chancer's Canterbury Tales, Literature Film Quarterly, 2002. Frisch, Annette. Francesco Vizzolini, Pasolini Reloaded, Interview, Rutgers University Alexander Library, New Brunswick, N.J. Green, Martin. The Dialectic Adaptation, Green, Naomi. Pier Paolo Pasolini, Cinema as Heresy. Princeton, N.J., Princeton Up, 1990. Meyer Cromer, Benjamin. Transmediality and pastiche as techniques in Pasolini's art production, in PPP Pier Paolo Pasolini and Death, eds. Bernhard Schwenk, Michael Semff, Ostfeildern 2005, pp. 109-118 Passananti, Erminia, Il Corpo and Il Pater. Salo Ola 120 Giornate di Sodoma di Pier Paolo Pasolini, Prima Edizioni, Troubadour, Lester, 2004, Seconda Edizioni, Joker, Savona 2008. Passananti, Erminia, Il Cristo dell'Arigia. Pier Paolo Pasolini. Cinema e Censura, Joker, Savona 2009. Passananti, Erminia, La Ricotta. Il Sacro Trasgradito. Il Cinema di Pier Paolo Pasolini e La Censura Religiosa, 2009 also published in Italy on screen Peter Lang ed. 2011. The book contains excerpts from the 1962 court trial. Pew, Tissen. Chaucerian Fablio, Cinematic Fablio, Pier Paolo Pasolini's I Reconti di Canterbury, Literature Film Quarterly 2004. Restivo, Angelo. The Cinema of Economic Miracles, Visuality and Modernization in the Italian Art Film. London, Duke Up, 2002. Rodi, Sam. The Passion of Pier Paolo Pasolini. Bloomington, Indiana, Indiana Up, 1995. Rumble, Patrick A. Allegories of Contamination, Pier Paolo Pasolini's Trilogy of Life. Toronto, University of Toronto Press, 1996. Schwartz, Barth D. Pasolini Requiem, 1st ed. New York, Pantheon Books, 1992. Siciliano, Enzo. Pasolini, A Biography. Trans. John Shepley. New York, Random House, 1982. Viano, Maurizio. A Certain Realism, Making Use of Pasolini's Film Theory and Practice. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1993. Williman, William H. Faithful to the Script, Christian Century, 2004. Topic external links Pier Paolo Pasolini on IMDb Interview with Jonas Mikas in Bomb Magazine Pasolini on Film Gallery 451 Piers Paolo Pasolini, Italian website with extensive commentary Pier Paolo Pasolini, Senses of Cinema BBC News Report on the reopening of the murder case Guy Flatley, The Atheist Who Was Obsessed with God, Movie Crazed Doug Ireland, Restoring Pasolini, Z Mag Pasolini's Own Notes on Salo from 1974 Pier Paolo Pasolini Poems Original Italian text. Video in Italian, Pasolini on the destructive impact of television on YouTube, interrupted and half censored by Enzo Biaggi. Italian website dedicated to Pasolini. Pasolini's second to last interview, long believed to have been lost. Pasolini's legacy, a sprawl of brutality. Dennis Lim, The New York Times, the 26th of December 2012.